cute little prototype with this cute little packaging. Um, we put it on the shelf at a store and we sold out in three days. And that was when I ultimately took the leap and decided to go in and, and work on this full time. We're back, open dialogue. Hey, Phil Toronto, still the same old guy, but we have Mesa, founder of Behave. Hi. Mesa, what's Behave? Yeah, so Behave is a, we're a candy brand. We make low sugar candy that is made with no artificial ingredients. So we don't use any artificial sweeteners. We don't use any sugar alcohols, um, no artificial colors, flavors, you know, everything we, all the ingredients in our, um, in our product are natural. Um, but we our candy. We like to think, and what we hear from people is that it still tastes delicious. Uh, so, you know, you're not compromising on taste, um, just by going with a better for you option. And that's really important to us. Totally. I can confirm that as a non-candy person that, didn't really grasp the whole opportunity when you first told me about it just because I don't have a sweet tooth. I have since tried it. It is delicious. I can't believe it. it's only like three grams of sugar, I think, yeah. in an entire package, which yeah. is insane. Yes. Um, you haven't always been in the candy business. What What were you doing before you started to behave? Yeah, so um, I've worked at a number of different brands. Always, I, I've always been at consumer brands, and I've always worked in uh, sort of like a combination of brand marketing and partnerships or business development. Um, so I started my career at the NFL. I was kind of in the sports world for a couple of years. Um, after the NFL, I joined Uber, uh, where I worked in yeah brand partnerships and business development. Um, I spent two years there, and then after Uber, I was um, introduced to the founder at Daily Harvest, um, which at the time was still kind of a small yeah. you know, niche startup. They were just kind of closing their Series A at that time, but obviously now has grown to really be a nationally recognized brand. Um, and I, yeah, I joined there pretty early. I sort of, um, you know, we were like a two person marketing team when I joined. I sort of oversaw everything brand um, and also partnerships. And then my counterpart oversaw everything growth and performance. Um, and then we, you know, the team really grew and, and was built out from there. Um, and then from Daily Harvest, I went to Soul Cycle. Um, so I sort of built out and led a business development team at Soul Cycle, and um, yeah, that's what I was doing when I uh, when I decided finally to take the leap and uh, work on Behave full time. Totally, and I mean, it's just a list of iconic brand after iconic brand. What yeah. finally pushed you over the edge to create your own iconic brand from scratch? Yeah, I mean, I so I had the idea for Behave initially when I was working at Daily Harvest. You know, Daily Harvest is in the health food space and the wellness space. And I would like just being honest, I think I've always been a really unhealthy person in a lot of ways. I've always played a lot of sports and been like generally pretty um, athletic, you could say. But I think that that sort of allowed me to be super unhealthy. Right to love junk food and fast food and just eat really terribly. Um, and I think like towards my mid twenties that really started catching up to me. And I was, you know, I was working in, you know, Uber is such a, a kind of work hard, play hard environment. So, you know, definitely was, I think left there a little bit burnt out and had not been eating well, had not actually been keeping up with exercise. So I got to daily harvest and I really was just thinking more about my own health and my own wellness. And the one thing I could never kick was candy. Like I could, um, you know, I, I started getting back into working out. I could cut out even, you know, carbs or soda. Like I, I cut out soda pretty easily. I was actually drinking quite a bit um, when I worked at Uber and that was easy for me to cut out. Candy was the one that I just could never cut out. And so, um, yeah, just kind of like was in this health food world and was like, there's so many better options coming out, whether it's chickpea pasta or low sugar ice cream or, you know, any category you looked at, you could really see these better for you options showing up. And candy was the one where I just wasn't seeing anything. And it was my biggest vice. It was the one that I couldn't kick. Um, so that was kind of when the idea started turning in my head. And then I ended up getting um, sort of recruited to the role at SoulCycle. And it was a really exciting opportunity. And, and I really loved kind of joining that team and being part of that. But um, that idea really stuck in the back of my head and, and I just, it kept kind of turning. And anytime I was in a store, I was at a movie theater at an airport, I would check the candy section and I just really found that there was nothing going on and that there was 
no innovation happening in the space. And I think after a while, I just kind of said, you know, this feels like an opportunity. Um, let me dig into it a little further. And I definitely did some research and we actually started, I uh, connected with a celebrity chef and she started developing the product um, while I was still at SoulCycle. So kind of just doing it a bit on the side. And then ultimately I felt like we'd gotten the product to a point where it tasted delicious. We had done some customer testing. We had really amazing feedback about it. We actually put it on the shelf, uh, like our, I think back, like we had this cute little prototype with this cute little packaging. Um, we put it on the shelf at a store and we sold out in three days. Um, awesome. That was a really early validator for me to say, okay, there's something here. There's legs behind this idea. The market is kind of speaking and saying like, we want, people want low sugar candy. Um, and that was when I ultimately took the leap and decided to go in and, and work on this full time. Totally. Yeah. I mean, makes sense. I think since brand has been such a pinnacle in your career, I mean, you've done a really great job around the branding itself. Go figure. Um, I actually, I have candy here. The packaging is beautiful. I can't quite nail the camera situation, but um, we'll, we'll link to it. Um, how how did you even approach uh, thinking through the the name and just the brand identity in general, just because that's such an integral part of, of what you do and what you've been doing and it's beautiful. So how did you approach that? Yeah, totally. So, you know, I think that I just in the early stages of think, you know, the idea going from, you know, I wish there was low sugar candy that I could eat to, okay, what if I were to start this? Um, the name actually just came about and I think I mentioned the idea to, to a couple of friends and we were sitting around and, um, one of my girlfriends, she's just such a like self starter. She has her own business. Um, and she just started like th throwing names out there and I think it just kind of snowballed and we were all like throwing out these crazy names. And, um, and I, I think one of them actually just threw out the name behave and it, I was like, Oh, behave. I love that. It's kind of like tongue in cheek. It definitely perks your interest um, and it sort of has this double entendre that I loved around, you know, we are making a better for you product, but, you know, Behave also has this like Austin Powers sort of like yeah. <laughs> naughty, um, connotation because totally, yeah. it's like this naughtiness of eating candy, but we're trying to dispel that myth. Like we're trying to create candy that you don't have to feel quote unquote naughty when you eat it. Um, so I just felt like it had like this multiple meanings thing and it, it sort of stuck. So yeah, it, it really just stuck after that conversation and, um, brand was, but, but I would say from that conversation and through the course of thinking about this more of, okay, creating a brand and creating a business, um, I always had my own thoughts around it. You know, I, there's a lot of things that are just important to me. I think as a person, like I am not. Um, I'm not a health nut and I want to be really open about that. Like I didn't build this brand because I'm keto, low sugar. I only drink like ashwagandha and matcha. Yeah. Every day. Like That's not me. And I think I wanted to be really honest and I wanted that to come through in our brand, which is that we're not a brand about being on a certain diet or losing weight or eating a certain way or having to stick to really strict rules around eating. We're actually a brand that's about Hey, remember when eating candy was just like fun and you were just a kid and you would binge your whole bag of Halloween candy and like, yeah, maybe feel a little sick after, but then the next day do it all over again. And it was just awesome. Like as you get older, that experience just is not fun anymore. You, the, the amount, the, the level to which you feel sick when you eat that much sugar just skyrockets. You can't just bounce back from like eating 50 grams of sugar in one sitting the way that we used to when we were kids. Um, and then the, there's just all this guilt tied to it. And, you know, generally people are just trying to, I think, reduce the amount of sugar. I mean, I know personally for me, part of my kind of health journey has been recognizing how much anxiety I get when I eat a lot of sugar. Like it actually kind of goes to my head and, and I, I really can get kind of anxious with it. So, oh, wow. um, you know, just, just, I think everyone has their own journey with it. And, and for us, the brand was really around, what if we could just make it feel like that fun that it was when we were kids and let's make a product that really speaks to that. So I like to say that we're actually about more candy, not less sugar or less of something. We're all about more and we're all about kind of, um, you know, yeah, just being able to let loose and to feel that freedom and that, um, that joy. 
totally used to have. And so, yeah, I kind of came with that idea. And and we worked with a, an incredible brand studio out of Brooklyn called Gander. Oh, cool. um, we sort of came to them. I, I came to them with that initial sort of thinking and thought process. And I think they also saw, had a really similar vision and, and they're just such a cool group of people, way cooler than I am. And um, I think we just really were able to just spitball and really align around like, you know, the, the brand process is just so fun, right? You're literally thinking like, who are the who are the muses for our brand, right? Like the muse for our brand is not like a fitness icon. It's like Lizzo and yeah. um, Gia Tolentini and, you know, just these badass women that are totally authentically themselves um, and and men as well. But, you know, of just kind of through that mood boarding process and really thinking about what is representative of our, of our brand. And I, I think that that really came through, hopefully, in, in what we ultimately have put out into the world. For sure. One, th one gripe I have with what you said, I would argue that you actually are pretty fucking cool. And then we can post <laughs> on the show just so you know, because I don't know many other people and this might be blowing up your spot. I don't know many other people that have DJed at the Soho Grand. So that's, okay. that's a enough. fact. Fair anyway, <laughs> just, I have to let the people know they need to let know. People know. Yeah. yeah, you are in fact cool. Um, yeah, once that vaccine is out, we'll, we'll be back on the turntables. Don't worry. I'm ready. Um, <laughs> she plays a phenomenal set. Uh, anyway, end of the sidebar. How do you, how do you approach reaching the consumer and driving trial? Because I feel like a big part of your business is just to honestly get the candy in people's hands. And once they realize like, oh, it's not bullshit. Like it actually tastes good. It's not crap. Totally. No. And it's such an important part of a food business. I think especially in the better for you space, there's a lot of skepticism and actually something that we really find is, um, you have to toe this fine line when you are promoting the fact that we are a low sugar product, because so many people have tried a lot of low sugar stuff that frankly just tastes awful. And we have put so much care and effort into our product, right? So I, I mentioned a little bit that I partnered with a celebrity chef named Elizabeth Faulkner, who is sort of like the brains, she's like the Willy Wonka behind our business. Um, and she's just such a genius. I was gonna say evil genius, she's not evil at right. all. She's like the <laughs> nicest person ever. But like Dr. Um, evil genius, yeah, I guess, but, the fun. Yeah, yeah. but it's, like, it's kind of evil, like the stuff she comes up with, I'm like, how did you do this with like this set of ingredients? And um, we put a ton of effort into our flavor. So, you know, and the feedback that we're really getting is that like, this is a, this product tastes amazing. Like I could down, I could down a full bag of this and, and, you know, it tastes as good as, as the regular candy that I, that I love or that I used to love that I can't eat anymore. Cause it's so full of sugar and crap. Um, and so, you know, we're getting really strong feedback on the taste, but it's such a good question, which is how do you convince someone who's not sure what it's going to taste like? to actually go, especially right now, we're primarily D to C, so to go online to make that purchase. I think there's a couple of things. I think one, um, the trend since quarantine has moved towards on people being much more comfortable with online purchasing across all categories, but I think especially for food, that behavior is just becoming more inherent in consumers across the US and probably across the world. Um, so I think we are seeing that barrier to like, someone, you know, putting their credit card information on some brand new candy brands website um, to make a purchase is I think that barrier is a little bit lower now, just with that becoming a more, um, a more common behavior right. for consumers. Um, and then, you know, I, I think the other thing is, is everything we do around the brand, we really, excuse me, we really give a lot of thought into making sure that everything communicates deliciousness and fun and energy, um, you know, in a way that hopefully can convey to the consumer just through our photography and our website and the way that everything is really um, presented that we are this delicious, juicy, um, mouth-watering candy. And, um, you know, we're not going to taste like your, you know, your dose of medicine that you need to hold your nose. So, you know, just in terms of the way that we do photo shoots, the way that we photograph um, in our ingredients and the fruit that our flavors are coming from and um, the gummies themselves, obviously really presenting them uh, in a way where you can see how kind of juicy and, and they really do look beautiful and delicious. And I, so I think that that helps a lot in, um, in, you know, just showing to the consumer in a digital space. 
um, that this is going to taste good. And then, of course, things like consult customer reviews right. um, and being able to communicate that. We've also been really lucky to get a lot of press. So we've had a lot of sort of credible um, online sources coming out and reviewing our product and really speaking to the taste. And I think that that has driven a lot of traffic to our site and um, and a lot of purchase for, for us so far. Totally. And this this might be a tough question considering the year we've had, but how are you approaching retail? Because I, I think you mentioned earlier when we first started the interview, it's just that that is in the pipeline. How how do you see that fitting in with the business since it's been so direct to consumer to start? Yeah. So up until now, we've done a handful of retail partnerships, really kind of small scale one offs um, around the city. For the most part, we're a New York based company, um, and what we've seen is that the demand for our product in retail is really, really strong. I think, you know, my assumption going into this business was that candy is that impulse purchase. People grab it and go, you know, it's not, you don't need it on your grocery list. You kind of just grab it at the checkout counter. And that's really what we're seeing in, um, in the retail spaces that we have shown up in, right? We're a brand new brand. We don't have a lot of brand recognition right now. It's not like a lot of people know who we are. People are still grabbing us. Like people see a bag of candy with three grams of sugar written on the front and they grab it. And so yep. um, I really see a big opportunity in retail. It's a big opportunity to build brand awareness for our product and for our brand. Um, and it's a big opportunity, obviously, just in terms of um driving, yeah, that trial and, and people being able to find us uh, and meeting the customer where they are. So they don't necessarily have to come to us online. To right. us. With that said, you know, the there's a huge opportunity in D2C. And there's also a, a reason to be D2C first for, for me and for us, at least, which is we want to build that community and we want to build that direct relationship with the consumer. When you go into retail, you do lose that, right? We don't get feedback from our customers that purchase us in a store. We get direct one-on-one -on -one feedback. We have right. one-on-one conversations with our customers in the online channel. And so um, I am a little bit sensitive to try to move too quickly into retail because I don't want to lose that until we have a really good handle on our community, who they are, what they think about our product, being able to really develop that two-way communication with um, our customers at this stage, which has already been invaluable. You know, we've already gotten feedback from our customers that we've incorporated even into our formulas, into the product itself, um, into, you know, the way that we market, into the way that we think about content and the things that we're putting out on social media, um, into the charity partners. You know, we donate 1% of online sales to um, a different charity. We choose a new charity every couple of months. We, oh, that's awesome. Uh, we have our customers write in and suggest um, suggest charities that are important to them that they want to see us supporting. So, um, you know, again, we want to build that community, um, but it's not lost to me that there's a huge opportunity in retail and that candy particularly is just a really strong retail product. Um, and, you know, we've had a lot of, in actually, we haven't started really reaching out to retailers, but we've had a lot of retailers reaching out to us. Um, so we're entertaining those conversations and we're definitely kind of curious about it, but, um, you know, we're, we're gonna, I, I think that there's also something to be said to, um, to, you know, being focused and, uh, and really, you know, seeing what that D 2 C opportunity can look like over the next six to 12 months, um, while we develop sort of that retail strategy and decide exactly how we want to move into that. Totally. Yeah. I mean, that's an amazing position to be in. The inbound retail is just exactly how you should be doing that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, oh, two more questions, then I'm going to let you get back to your day. I know you're super busy. Um, what's next for Behave? Like, I, I feel like maybe it's additional SKUs because you started with a bear. Um, mm -hmm. Again, plug for the sour bears. They're delicious. Mm -hmm. Try them. Um, but yeah, what, what's what's next in the pipeline for you that you can share? Yeah. I mean, so in terms of um, product pipeline, I, I've said this before, you know, the amazing thing about working with Elizabeth and working with someone like her, like a, just a chef who is so passionate about food and who she's so excited about behave as well, um, is that every time I have a meeting with her, our pipeline has grown by like several products because she's just constantly making things and bringing me things. And um, she just has such an eye to the space and she's always constantly ideating and coming up with new, new ideas. So, um, 
so yeah, we, we kind of have a lot of things that we have started, you know, Elizabeth has started messing around with in the kitchen. Um, in terms of though, like what we're really thinking about in the near term, I would say is new flavor and um, new flavor extensions of the gummies, um, you know, new shapes, new flavors, really introducing some, some variations on the gummy product. Um, and then we do want to introduce a plant-based gummy as well. Our current oh, wow. gummy is, uh, we, we're gelatin based. We use sort of a kosher, you know, grass fed highest grade quality gelatin on the market. Um, but we're not plant-based. So we will also look into doing a plant-based gummy, which, it, you know, it's a very different texture. It's a different experience from the kind of classic gummy that people are used to, which is why we wanted to start with that um, that gummy that really just tastes like that childhood gummy bear people are used to, to having. But, um, you know, there, we, we know that a lot of people that have reached out to us and say, I'm so in for behave, um, but I need that plant-based product. So we're, we're working on that as well. Again, listening to your customers and having exactly. that direct channel exactly. that just exactly. embodies it. That's amazing. Right. Last question is where can people find you and or behave on, on the internet? Yeah, so um, you can find us at eatbehave.com. It's our website. Um, and also at eatbehave uh, on Instagram as well. And if anyone wants to reach out, have any questions for us, um, just email hi at eatbehave.com. Perfect. Thank you so much for doing this. This Thanks was great. For this was great. Thanks for having me. Totally. This was awesome. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> awesome.